You'll never do this. You look at the time. It's 8.30. Okay? It's 8.30. You've got some work to do, but you're watching Netflix. And then you, you tell yourself. 9 o'clock sharp. I start work. I stop slacking. 9 o'clock sharp. Huh? And then you watch your show. And then you glance at the clock. And suddenly it's 9 or 1. And you're like, shit, I missed the opportunity to start work. I can't do my work anymore. It's 9 or 1. We gotta wait till 10. <laughs> you do that? I do that too often. Vamos, vamos. Noise. Today we have Ultra Plepka. These two players are under a year old. And uh, they're very new to the game. Let's see what they do when they're with their backs to the wall in RTA. So, we're in a pre-bet and Bernard is banned out by the Brazilian source and Robin Meese takes out a twin China. So, source obviously doesn't want to give up turn one by banning out Bernard because probably he doesn't have Bernard and he doesn't want to give the opponent turn one. So there we go, first pick by the Israelite, the Israeli, uh, the Israeli, um, the, by Robin Miss. Sigmarus and very meta by Saurus with Fran and Beretta. Those are strong units for a new account. Having Fran in there, 6 start and Beretta, good for DOA. Robin Miss has a secondary awakened Bella. Did we just get scammed? This guy, secondary awakened Bella with Tishar. Wow. Is Saurus in trouble here? How do you get these? Did we just get scammed? How do you get all these? Anyway, Source follows up with Shannon and Verbal. This is a very classic newbie account, uh, units from a new account. But Romimins has double phoenixes, Ganymede and Vert. Okay, level 35 Vert, but still. No, he switches up to Veladrol. So what's the last pick from Source gonna be? And is Source gonna ban out that secondary awakened Bella? Or is he gonna take out one of the Phoenixes that can do big damage? What's the play from Source here? Back to the wall in an impossible situation. Both of them have identical uh, PvE timing. And there are uh, less than 100 days into the game. However, uh, based on unit levels, Robin Mintz has the clear advantage right here. Now, it looks like Rom is going to ban out the Beretta so as not to deal with the uh, continuous damage effects because maybe he anticipates uh, immunity ban coming out from the source and because we looked at these two accounts, we know none of them have will runes. They are not farming Necro. So source doesn't ban out the Bella. It does, he doesn't ban out the immunity. Instead, he bans out the, the Sigmaris that has the potential to control up his entire team. And that's a good plan because, well, Veramos doesn't cleanse incapacitation effects, I think. So, that's a good idea. And assuming you don't have will runes, uh, that Ganymede is going to get turned one. Right? So, he's going to be able to seal magic right away. So, banning the Sigmaris uh, makes sense. Makes sense. However, is the Shar going to one-shot the whole team? I don't know. We spent about 45 minutes trying to find two fighters of close rank, trying to set this fight up. Will it end in one turn from Tashar? Let's find out. <laughs> Please don't. Please don't. Is it going to be a secret dungeon? Who gets turn one right here? Turn one going to be Veramos! Does he get the stun? Does he get the stun? Super Crush? Get the stun of the Ganymede! That's good! But what about Fran? Fran goes for immunity right here! Veladrol is going to be able to cleanse! Veladrol is going to be able to cleanse though! But wait! Crow! Crow! Is going to move! Can Crow kill something? Can Crow kill the Tashar? There is one harmful effect! Goes for the Scar! He goes for the Ganymede instead of the Tashar! 10,000! That would have killed the Tashar! But he didn't! He went for the kill on Ganymede, he failed! Ganymede being more tanky, so now Tashar has a chance! Now Tashar has a chance though, to kill something. He does the seal magic! <laughs> he does the seal magic! 
Until, until Fran. But there's immunity. For chip damage. If the shard does not do enough damage. But then Bella with the heal right here. Into a violent proc. Okay. Additional turn. And Crow is dropping dangerously low. This Velo is going to be able to do some good damage to Crow right here. Takes away the attack buff. That's pretty huge. Is Veramos going to continue focusing this Ganymede or work on this Tashar? What's the play here? It continues on to Ganymede. But that might be a mistake because this Ganymede is tanky. And then he refreshes Bella for another heal. And he procs another Violent. Wow. So there's two Violent procs the way of, of Robin is right here. But... Let's not count him out. Let's not count uh, Source out. He can heal up the crow. Okay. And then he can buff defense from Pep Talk with Shannon. So that's gonna make the crow a bit more tanky. Is he still going for this Ganymede? He's still going for Ganymede. This Tashar is still free to do damage. And now there's no immunity. Tashar can get a stun. And there we go. There's the stun right there. And now there's no cleanse on Fran's side. Bella could very well heal again, and she gets the seize into the defense break instead of healing. This Ganymede is still surviving. There's really no damage to take down this Ganymede, right? There's no damage at all. Maybe a misplay right there to let the Tashar stay alive. So Fran has one chance right here. Fran can reduce attack bar. That's the only thing she can do. There's no heals. Unless the Fran procs a violent, no violent proc. Bear in mind, it took them about 6 minutes to kill Dragon's B10. So... Uh, it, I think this guy has some, probably has two violent sets on these two units, but that's about it. Tashar, right here, gonna be able to go for the finish on Crow. Likely gonna get it as well, unless he goes for the stun. Um, oh, wow, that's a good, that's a lot of damage! Two defense buff on this front, but then, Veramos gets, I mean, Veramos gets a crit onto Ganymede, so Ganymede's down, 4v3 situation. A defense break onto front. Fran, however, if she doesn't die, she is, she's able to cleanse. She has to cleanse up, unless there is no skill ups on the front. She should have cleansed, unless there is no skill ups. She goes for the immunity, but that means that Tashar is going to be able to kill next turn. Unless Crow can finish the Tashar right here. Is he going to take Tashar down and secure the game? Or, he gets a defense break. Tashar should be able to kill Fran, and that's it. 3v3, with sustain on the side of Source. But damage, definitely, definitely on the side of Rob right here. There's the heal. Better draw with more Sanctuary, taking away defense break. Oh, oh, this is bad. There's no more defense buff and Crow. There's no more defense buff and Crow. That could mean that uh, Tesha could very well snipe the Crow right here. Good chance that that could happen. And it goes. 2v3. No heal on Bella. Seizes away the attack buff. Can Veramos finish off the Tesha? Is it going to be a crit from this Veramos onto Tashar? It crits. Does it kill? It doesn't kill just a bit more. Does Bella have to heal? Does Bella have to heal? Shannon can kill it. Shannon can kill it. No. No. <laughs> he does the pep talk. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, he could have killed. But he went for the pep talk. And he takes 10,000 damage. Another violent proc from Bella. Bella should have to heal. No, he doesn't have to heal. Goes for, goes for the, the defense break. Veramos, does he kill right now? Please tell me you killed the Tashar. Kill the Tashar. He kills the Tashar. 2v2. Sustain with Saurus. Defense buff. On the side. Of. I mean, sustain with Robin means the defense buff on the side of uh, Saurus. But with immunity on Veljo, he can't go for the super crush. He can't get a stun. And with this hit right here, Veljo, I mean Veljo, Vermos is almost dead. Can Vermos come up with a clutch stun? A Vermos can clutch stun right here. If he can stun two targets, he has a chance. Does he have the super crush to stun two targets? He goes for the super crush. He does not stun the Veljo, which means Sanctuary is up. Unless, well, he doesn't go for the Sanctuary. So Shannon versus the world. Unfortunately, Shannon cannot finish up. This Bella, and she doesn't have enough damage. So, close as it was, uh, with a couple of misplays, but with the new players, right? You expect misplays. With a couple of misplays, uh, this match is likely going to go, go the way of Robin Miss from Israel. But it was closer than I thought it would be. <laughs> I mean, you saw the two six-star Phoenixes, and you thought it was definitely going the way of Robin Miss, but it was very close. 
Yeah, it was very close. Here we go. We're moving on to the next game. And we'll see what the pre are going to be this time around. Uh, if you were Storrs right here, would you take away one of the Phoenixes? Would you he goes for the immunity ban. And Romimus bans the Sigmaris. So that means he did his homework. He inspected Storrs account before this match. Because why would you ban Sigmar? Sigmar wasn't revealed in the last match. Yeah? So he actually inspected. First pick for Source, anyway, with Velodrol banned out. Would it be a good idea to, to, to stack debuffs since there's no immunity? Or should he secure the Veramos pick? Instead, Source goes for the front pick. And this front pick was integral for him just now. Having front on his side gave him the speed leader he needed to secure turn one in that fight. That was actually more important than, than it looked. Roman Miss, however, with a six star Veramos. We didn't think he had that. And a six star Bella, again, based on the first wave of picks, the AI says that Roman Miss has an 80% chance to win this game. Can Source pull something out of the hat? Goes forward to Bernard to secure turn one. But what can he do with turn one? What does he have? He has the Shayna. Oh, interesting. Interesting. That could be the game changer, knowing that there are no well rooms in the game. Nobody has immunity. Being able to land debuffs is going to change the outcome of this game. Having Bernard in there, having two speed leaders in there is going to secure turn one for Source. He, right now, if you're a Source, you should be stacking debuffs. Band up. Yeah. So he goes with the Vert and the Beretta pick, and he's likely going to ban up the Veramos. Because then there's no cleanse. You cannot get rid of debuffs. And you have turn cycling on the side of Source. So what is the ban going to be for Romimus right here? Does he take out Beretta? Because he doesn't want to deal with the dots afterwards a 6-star Beretta. Or does he ban on the Shina? Because Shina is defense break. What's going to be the play right here? For sure he's not getting turn 1. There is two. There are 3 speed leaders. And there is fast units on the side of Source. So turn 1 is definitely going to be for the Brazilian. But what is the Brazilian going to ban? What is Source going to ban right here? Is he going to ban on variables? Because that's the only cleanser. Time is run out. He does not ban on variables. He goes for the Bella ban. I mean, you take out a sustain. I guess. I guess. I guess. That, that is, I guess that he is, that's his game plan. Take out the sustain. So accuracy leader by Romimus versus... No! He picked the Vert Speed Leader! He picked the Vert Speed Leader! <laughs> 28 is better than 24! He went... 28 is better than 24! I go to the gym! <laughs> Still, he secures turn 1! He secures turn 1! Okay, so who is he gonna go on here? He's gonna take out his variables. He goes with the shark, trying to take out the damage source. Okay. Shina's gonna get a stun. Okay. Shina's, uh, after, after, after Bernard buff. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, there's gonna be a buff from front so that, so that you, you won't be, you, by buffing immunity, you'll be immune to the stuns and the resets from Ganymede, the stun from Veramos as well. So having immunity here is good. So can he do enough with this Shina? Whatever he does this turn is going to be cleansed by the Veramos though. We have to bear that in mind. The stun will not be cleansed, but the defense break will be cleansed. A violent prop from the Shina. That's a big violent prop. However, however, Shina loses immunity and is uh, susceptible to a very more stun right here. Vert, however, is going to cut, and Vert might be able to finish up this Phoenix. But he does not. But does Bernard move? Did he gain enough? Attack bar. He did. So Bernard can finish up the Teshar. And that's it. 4v3. No Teshar on the side. No more damage. Uh, no more main damage unit on the side of Robin Miss. However, this Veramos with attack buff. We should not underestimate that. This Veramos with attack buff could very well win the game right here. Again, again, Soros is focusing on his Ganymede. Instead of the... I, I, I would really feel that the Veramos is the bigger, bigger threat right here. But he's going on the Ganymede nonetheless. And uh, he's going to get defense break right here. He's going to be able to stop this Ganymede from moving because of the attack bar reduction. But Veramos is getting ready to do some damage with that attack buff. We shall see what happens right here. 
Bernard's turn with the... He weakens the attack, but it gets cleansed right away. Because that's what Veramos does. Is he going to be able to crit the Shiner now? Doesn't crit. Not enough damage. In fact, the Fairy couldn't even cleanse it right now unless he gets greedy. Does he go for the pushback? Or does he go for the cleanse? Thinking it over. Time is running out. Time has run out for the Brazilian. Goes for the pushback. Which means next time he takes a turn. Next time he takes a turn. Oh, no, no, no. He was, it was just lag right there. So he's continuing to work on his Ganymede. Turn cycling uh, is looking very good right now for Soros, even though he's not focusing on Veramos. He's uh, continuously lapping. Continuously lapping uh, Romimus right here. Because of Vert, the speed buff, and Shina's reduction. In fact, I think Shina has the AoE right now. But she goes. Uh, maybe it's not max skill. Because if it were max skill, she had the AoE right there. But now, to, to balance the, the scales, there is a slow speed debuff on the side of uh, Soros. Which means that's gonna limit the turn cycling can do. But with Vert and Fran combined to reduce attack bar and gain attack bar, I would say it's still very, very much. Uh, this this game is very much uh, in favor of of Saurus right here. Goes for the body slap onto Veramos again, trying to hope that the weakened attack sticks to limit the damage coming up from this Veramos. Taking his time right here in between every single move. Uh, to try and make the right move this time around is Saurus. Doesn't want to make a misplay right here. He has the game in his hands. He doesn't want to throw it. Doesn't want to do a 3-2-2 right here. And with one more hit from this Bernard, that's going to be the end of Ganymede. He could go for the speed buff. Nope. He goes for the finish. And Ganymede is out of picture. 2v4. There is literally no way right now because as long as Saurus focuses his attacks, Onto Veramos, never mind, he's going on to... He's leaving Veramos for last. He's not focusing anyway. Uh, Romimus throws in the tower. We are going to a game three between Romimus and Saurus. So I think if you're Romimus right here, do you want to take out the Fran? Do you want to take out the... Uh, do you need to take out the Shina? Because I think the Shina did a lot right there. We're into the third game right here. And uh, Shina is being banned out by Romimus. That's a good ban, good pre-ban. Because uh, Shina did so much work for defense break is just uh, detrimental when you don't have uh, immunity. And uh, he, uh, Saurus bans out... What's his face? The Wind, uh, the wind Phoenix Teshark. So that's going to limit the damage on Romimin's side. Uh, first pick, Sigmarus. I believe he's picking Sigmarus because he's, he sees that Saurus has Sigmarus. But Saurus again goes with turn 1. He values turn 1 a lot. Goes with immunity, with front, attack buff. Speed Leader, as well as Bernard. So that's going to secure turn 1, unless Robin Mins has some sort of Speed Leader. Because without a Speed Leader, turn 1 is definitely going the way of Saurus. Goes with Vert, goes with Bella, denies the Vert pick from Saurus' side. But if you're Robin Mins right now, you need immunity, uh, get rid of immunity, because you know that Saurus doesn't have a white monster box, and there's always, there's, it's going to be those debuffers. It's going to be the Beretta, it's going to be the Lapis, it's going to be Diva. So you need immunity. And you need two. Because only one immunity is not enough. But because the ball is currently in Robin Min's hands, he can go with the, the Velajul, he can go with the Veramol. So that's double cleansers right there for all the debuffs that Soros can output. So he, indeed he picks the double cleansers, one immunity buffer, one cleanser. Soros right here, I don't believe he has a stripper at this level. He may be forced to ban out this Velajul and hope that his debuffs can do enough before the variables cleanse. What's the last pick gonna be? It has to be a strong pick that would enable Roman Mins to say, hey, maybe let's let uh, let's let the Beretta too, you know? But from the looks of it, it's going to be that crow. And if you're Roman Mins, it's very likely you're gonna decide to still stick with the Beretta band. Or I don't know, maybe take away the front so that you can freeze. Because if front is taken out, the Sigmaris can freeze. Not quite sure what his strategy is here right now, but uh, I think he's decided on the Beretta. And if you're a Saurus, I think the clear cut ban right here has to be the Velodule or the Verb. It has to be one or the other. But if you if you let the Velodule through, you can forget about any debuff landing, right? Or is there? Time has run out for Saurus to pick a ban. What's it gonna be? He bans out the Sigmaris, so he leaves the double. Cleansers, two immunity buffers in the game. And he has to pick a leader skill. Source, pick a leader skill. You have to pick a leader skill. 
Something like the speed leader from yes, yes, front speed leader. That's right. So turn one from source. No will rules. Can Saurus do enough on turn one before Sanctuary kicks in? Because the moment Sanctuary kicks in, there is no way to take down Romimus right here. There is literally no way. Here we go. Turn one Bernard, of course. And then he's going to get immunity after that. But the thing is, can he do enough damage right after? What, is, what does Lapis do? Does Lapis stun? Does Lapis slow? Does Lapis absorb attack bar? I can't remember. Does he? Does, does Lapis defense break? Wait, does Lapis defense break? Because if Lapis defense break... No, the crow! The crow moves! The crow moves before Lapis! That's, uh, that's, that's bad. That's actually bad. So now the Lapis has... Has one turn before Sanctuary is up. Retrieve magic. Doesn't absorb attack bar. From Bella Jewel. So Bella is going to be able to heal. Okay. Bella is going to be able to heal. And push Bella Jewel up. And Bella Jewel is going to be able to do Sanctuary. And push Vert up. And then we're going to see some damage coming out. From Vert and Bell and Barrels. Okay. So there's going to be the whole team. The entire team of Saurus. I mean of Romimus is going to move because of this Vert. Unless this Vert doesn't crit. But he crits. So, it's going to be four turns right now. Vert already moved. Veramos is going to move. I believe Bella is going to move. Going to be able to seize as well. And then I think Bella Jewel is also going to be able to move. And that's going to be the damage source taken out right here. That seize takes out the attack buff. So Bella Jewel is going to be able to do some damage right here to this crow. Perhaps put some damage over time. And then the Vert is going to move again. And that's going to be able to lap Saurus right here. So this is get looking really bad for Saurus. And looking really good for, for Romimus right now. And now there's immunity you can't defense break. So all there is is an attack buffed up Lapis. Can she do enough damage to this Vert? I doubt so. I doubt so. He's splitting the damage now and putting damage onto Veladrul. There's going to be one Purify for this Crow. And that's it. The last heal for this Crow. But is that enough? Does this Vert crit? Yes, he does. 100 crit rate vert at this level. Not bad. And he pushes everybody up again. So, Bella is going to move. Venomos is going to move. But Crow has one chance. Crow has one chance right here. After this Bella move, Crow can move once. Before he dies next turn. Can Crow do enough damage here? Can he do enough damage to take down this vert? Is he going to crit? He goes for the default attack. Wait, what? Did he even do the third attack yet? I don't know. I don't know. Did he even do the third attack yet? I don't think he did. So, anyway, that's Crow's last move, okay? That's gonna be Crow's last move right here. I don't think uh, he has a chance to take another turn because Veladrol, uh, we relate into the game where Crow is really squishy and this Vert is gonna one tap. This Vert is definitely going to one tap this Crow. However, there is one opening. There is one opening right here for Lapis. Okay, Lapis has one opening to control up the Bella and everybody else. This is the final opening for Lapis to do something. Can Lapis, can Saurus make the most out of this? Goes for, oh my god, this Vert counters too! This Vert actually counters, so nobody has immunity right now. And Bernard has a boost, but she has to reduce attack bar on Bird right here. So Bernard boost. However, I do think that even with the Bernard boost, I don't think that's enough. I think that Bird is still going to cut, and he does. And if he crits, we're going to see immunity again. Except we're not, unless the, does the Bella have a heal? If the Bella heals right here, it's over. Does Bella have a heal? Yes, she does. So that's it. Game over because now Veladrol gets enough attack bar to be able to do Sanctuary again. And that means there is no way to debuff Romimins anymore. So, and this Vert is, uh, is apparently not bad. 
level 35, 100% crit rate, under a year into the game. That's pretty commendable. Yeah? So another buff up from front, but I don't think there is a way back. Not through immunity. Not through immunity at all. Yeah? Another violent proc to rub it in. It looks like Saurus is going to take the fall right here. I don't see a way back unless uh, somehow Bernard can miraculously crit for big damage on top of a defense break. So, the game goes to Rubbermans and he takes this series 2-1. Two, two, Congratulations to Rubbermans for the win tonight. This has been pretty fun. Yeah? We should do this more often for newer players to do some 1v1s. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see uh, more of these fights. Maybe uh, we could bring back King of the Hill. Yeah, at a high level of RTA or some other sort of tournament that we can do on a weekly basis. If I win this RTA, we do an LD pack. I need to find my epic playlist again. I forgot about it. I forgot uh, what, <coughs> what it was. Oh. Oh boy. Josephine right off the bat. <clears throat> Josephine right off the bat. Oh. Whoa, oh dear. Interesting. Oh dear. This bro. Oh, ah, fuck it. Let's go, bro. <laughs> if we win, <clears throat> if we win, then we do LD pack, okay? If we lose, no LD pack. Gotta earn it. What's his last pick gonna be? I'm banning Josephine anyway, I don't care. Don't wanna deal with Josephine! Why did I pick Hathor next to Josephine? What do you mean? Why does it matter? Why does it matter? Just ban the Josephine, or I could have still magic the Josephine. It doesn't matter. I don't think it matters. He has no reset, right? He has no reset. He can't. He can't. Uh, he has one turn of immunity. The child doesn't even have immunity, so we could sleep this one. Okay, we could sleep this one right here. Okay, and then I could seal this one. Okay, I seal it, and then we defense break it, yeah, and then we just kill it, yeah, so he's dead, okay, and then we kill this one, I guess we're doing LD pack, I guess we're doing LD pack. Dude, if somebody lets you have Gany Hathor in RTA without picking, um, like, for example, Josephine plus Antares plus some sort of uh, anti Gany Hathor, then there's no way to win. Gany Hathor is too strong together, right? What channel? I don't know. Random channel. Okay. Anyway, let's start. Hey, yeah. I don't know the channel. Why? You guys want to snipe it? Is that it? No, I don't, I don't want to tell you the channel. <sighs> See if we can get a Faye. I mean, I hope to get a Faye or Monte. Monte would be pretty fun, right? Does Monte... No, wait. Monte would go in Molo. Yeah, Monte would be pretty fun. Daphnis would be pretty fun too, that's right. Daphnis would be pretty fun. Oh, net 5 lightning. <laughs> no stop. Josephine. Ah. We earned this, right? We earned this Elden pack. From winning an RTA. 
You know why I'm in fighter? Because sometimes I record a video and I want to get a win with using a certain unit, right? And I might lose friggin' 10 in a row. <laughs> That's why I'm in fighter. That's five lightning, wow. No. Not bad lightning rate. We got two lightning in 22. That's good lightning rate. That's good lightning rate. A lot of times if you see me in RTA, you get free win. Because you see me drop. Are we dropping like first spec year gar? <laughs> you know how many how many fights it took me to get one year gar RTA win? God damn it. <laughs> so hard. One more lightning, come on. I wonder when is the next secondary awakening coming? This balance patch, do you think there's a lot of content in it? For this balance patch. I think that uh, we'll be seeing uh What's her face? The win the win assassin. I'll be using her again. Son Sonia? What's the name? I can't I don't remember. Tanya. Tanya. We'll be using Tanya. A lot. Again. With the lure comp. Gemini lure Tanya. Tiana, Tiana, Gemini, Tanya, teams, th teams like that. Yeah, Laika, surviving one more hit, that could be pretty good. Could be pretty good. So we'll likely see those. Here we go, guys. This is it. Do we get the LD Lightning? Never buying an LD pack again. Time for a random review of the day. Let's review this LD scroll right here. Let's review Ragdoll. Let's review Gianna. Let's go. Scheisse. This sucks. Oh well, that's it. $88 down the drain. Thanks for watching. So today's stream is not $88. 88 plus... 25 US dollars for the plep, for the ultra plep cup. And someone got the pioneer. Someone got the pioneer. God damn it. I mean, I don't need it, but yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. And I hope you guys have a great remainder of the weekend. Uh, whatever remains of it. Have fun. Enjoy yourselves. It's another day before the new week starts, okay? Uh, we may do some other streams later. Maybe later. But for now, that's it for me for real. And um, I'll see you guys next time, okay? Bye! Okay, so Dark Paladin gets a shield, right? She hits harder now, and she gets a shield as well. So that's cool. She becomes slightly better. She becomes better. Dark Pioneer becomes like Tiana, but can resist Tiana. Resistible Tiana. So you trade away reliability for speed when you use Dark Pioneer. That's assuming you have a Dark Pioneer and a Tiana. You use a Dark Pioneer, you trade away uh, the, the, the reliability of not being able to be resisted for speed because Dark Pioneer has higher base speed. Light Unicorn now becomes like Akuma that changes form. I mean, everybody gets the... She becomes a Molly. Light, Light Unicorn has the Molly passive now, pretty much. Okay? Not a big deal. Uh, good unit to draft against people who try to leave you in RTA. Uh, Water Archangel, skip. Win, win Archangel, AoE revive. Yeah. Nothing too game breaking here as well. Nothing too game breaking, I don't think. Uh, what else we got? We have the uh, Water. Water Dragon Knight now removes one harmful effect. At the end of your at the end of your turn. At the end of your turn. At the end of your turn. Okay, all the Dragonite buffs. Laika can take four hits now. That's pretty cool. 
Like I can take four hit, that's pretty cool. Okay? Chow, still gonna be Chow, still gonna do what he does. Nothing really gonna change right there. Yeah? But you can't defense break him for two turns. That's it. Light Dragon Knight, whoever decided the Light Dragon Knight buff doesn't use Light Dragon Knight. He's, he's no idea, okay? He doesn't know why. It's the I, Light Dragon Knight buff. I took him out of storage, I looked at him, and I put him back in there, okay? That's what's happening. He goes back in. Nothing changes. Still shit, okay? Still shit. The attack wasn't the issue. It wasn't, the stats were never the issue. You idiot. Okay, fire P race. Now you can strip, huh? Now you can strip. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We'll have to experiment. Okay. Cannon girls. I don't have them. I never knew them. But I predicted they were. Oh no, don't save image. I predicted they were getting a buff anyway because they were shit to begin with. So probably some of them may be good. Probably. Yeah. Willful Buster, thank you for the sub. Let's move on. Sylph. Now you have Ager. Now you have. Yo, what's this? What's a what's his face? <coughs> Shimite. Shimite. <coughs> now Shimite becomes like the Wind Ager. Yeah? Like the Wind Ager now. So <coughs> she's gonna be plus speed leader. So you're gonna see an RTA for sure. Okay? So Shimite becomes good now. I didn't miss the Dark Pioneer buff. You missed the Dark Pioneer buff. <coughs> <coughs> Shit, I choked on my... I choked on the coffee. The Rux get a buff. Fast Swing absorbs attack bar. Ah, okay. And then the Water one might be good now for, for R5 and whatnot, right? Because you do more damage if it's immune to stun. All bosses as well. So it might even be good for dragons because immune to stun. If a Rakan has immunity and you attack it, you will do 50% more damage as well. Because immune to stun. Okay? Immunity buff counts as immune to stun as well, for those of you who don't know. So Water Rakshasha might be doing more damage, big damage as well. The wind one gets a uh, 20%. Oh. Okay. Oh, so so you start from 15 and then it goes to 20. If you ah okay, that's okay. A little bit increase in chance for additional turn. Light one decreases beneficial effect by one turn when you attack. So it, it, light one is like a stripper. Uh because when people start with will runes, you can strip the will runes. Because the will runes are only one turn. So that's okay. That's interesting. Assassins, cool. Water one, uh da da da. Win one, oh! Win one's pretty nice. So you open up on a weaker target, and your next your next, your next target takes 30% extra damage. And that's gonna kill pretty much everything in New Wars. Or wherever, whatever you want to kill anyway. Yeah? Elven, Rangers? Ah, no one cares. Yeah, that's about it, right? What is this? Some of this skill errors will be resolved. Anything interesting here? Uh, Lucas now gets an initial turn uh, if the enemy is defeated with with the second skill. Okay. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, unless I missed anything, that's about it, right? <coughs> Positive user, thank you for four months. Welcome back. Eladio, yeah, we went to the Eladio buff already. It's not gonna really change a the thing. They're still gonna be used for what it's used for. Okay. I really wanted to do an edited video for this one, but I'm sorry. I procrastinated too much today. And then sleep one. 